Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be learning how to code a decision tree from scratch in Python. Uh, so the goal of this video is to show you how to go from the theory of a decision tree to actually coding your very first decision tree. The goal of the video is not to give you any code that you're actually going to use in your machine learning projects. And the reason is that when you think about languages like Python and R, they already have some pretty um, efficient built-in libraries for decision trees and so you'll use that in practice but this is going to show you what's happening under the hood and so for today's example we'll use the very first example in our original decision trees theory video which is going to be linked below and that is trying to figure out if a mystery fish is a salmon or a tuna and let's say this is our data set so all the little red dots are salmon all the little blue dots are tuna and let's just say we have two variables to keep things simple for today the length of the fish and the weight of the fish we see that this is a pretty good candidate data set for a decision tree. And the reason is that we see some pretty clear cut horizontal and vertical boundaries that are going to separate our space really well. For example, if I asked you, where's the best first split? Well, that's actually a two parter. The first question is, which variable do you want to split, weight or length? And the second follow up question is, which value do you want to split it at? And I think the answer many of us would give is I want to split at length equals three. And the reason we want to do that is because everything to the left of that, where the length of the fish is less than three, those are all categorized as salmon. And on the right of that, we can do a little bit more work. So the next step would probably be, let's check if weight is less than four, because everything that is length greater than three, but weight less than four is going to be categorized as a tuna. And then above that, we can do more work. So this is generally how a decision tree works. And so when we go start writing our code, we're going to be looking for these same splits that we found intuitively. All right, so let's hop over to the code and start writing our first decision tree. Okay, so I have the code here. All I've done is imported some libraries that we're going to use. I have uh, pulled in the data frame called fish.csv where all of our data is living. But I'll make that available to you as well. Uh, and this is what the data frame looks like. So we have two variables, length and weight. And we have the type of the fish, which is a string that's either tuna or salmon. And below I've plotted the same exact graph we just saw before. Now, before we get into any of the modeling, I think something... Uh, I want to do, by the way, I haven't thought about this problem too much. I'm pretty much doing it in real time here. Um, the first thing I want to do, it's not going to be helpful to have this string be tuna or salmon. Let's change it to zeros and ones so we can work with it a lot easier. So we'll do df.type, which is the type of the fish, is going to be df.type.apply, lambda t, and then we'll do one if t is equal to salmon, and then otherwise it's going to be zero. So this apply function basically takes in a whole column of your data frame, this column currently consisting of either salmon or tuna, and it applies the following transformation. If that word is salmon, it puts a one, otherwise it puts a zero. So now if I run this, and then I ask for the data frame again, we see the type is now full of zeros and ones, which are gonna be easier to work with. So now I think let's write some skeleton code for the decision tree, and then I'm gonna suspect we'll need some helper functions along the way, but we'll worry about those a little later. Let me leave some room for those helper functions. So let's say, let's first define the features. So features is equal to length and weight. And the way we're going to go about it, we're trying to find the first best split. And again, that's a two part question. The first one is which variable do you want to split on? And the second one is which value of that variable do you want to split on? So that sounds like two for loops to me. So the first for loop will say for F in features. So let's try every possible feature. And then we're going to try every possible value of that feature, starting at the lowest. So let's do cur is equal to df f dot min. So let's get the lowest value of length first. Uh, let's do step is equal to 0 0.1. So step is the increment along which I travel that variable. The smaller this is, the better, because you're going to find the exact split. But that also means that it's going to be a lot less efficient because it has to check a lot more splits. So let's start with 0.1 and see if it does the job for us. And then we'll say uh, while, we'll say while cur is less than dff.max. So basically we're gonna stop when we reach the maximum value of this variable. There's no point continuing after that. And inside here is where we want to get the entropy from splitting this data frame at that split, at that variable and at that current value. And so that'll be a helper function, but we'll say cur entropy is equal to get entropy from split and I think we'll need to pass in the data frame of course we'll need to pass in the feature we're using and we'll need to pass in the current value of that feature and so this function will give us back the resulting entropy if we split the data frame at that variable at that current value of that variable 
And now we'll need to check if the current entropy we just got is less than the best entropy so far because we're trying to find the best split and our metric is entropy. So I think let's define a dictionary above that's going to collect the running best information. So we'll say best params is equal to this dictionary should contain the feature that's the best so far. It'll be none to start with. It should contain the value of that feature that's the best to split on and we should also collect the entropy itself. So let's say that's np.infinity so that whatever comes after that will be initialized as the best. And so what we need to do is basically check if cur entropy, if the current entropy we got from this particular situation is less than the best entropy so far. So let's put that here. That means this is even better than the best split we have. So let's uh, change everything in the best params dictionary to reflect that. So we'll say best params feature is going to be equal to f, the current feature best params um, val is going to be equal to the current value and best params entropy will be equal to current entropy. So now we have successfully changed all those if this was better than the current. And now we'll of course need to increment cur so we don't get an infinite while loop. So we're going to increment cur by step and then the while loop should terminate at some point and then the outer loop should terminate at some point. And then at the end let's print out best params. So let's give that a go. Well, it's going to fail right now because we haven't initialized this function get entropy from split. So let's define that next. So def get entropy from split. And we said it takes in a data frame, it takes in a feature, and it takes in a value. So this is again asking uh, the question of if I split this data frame using that feature at that value, what is the resulting entropy? And so it's going to split into two sub data frames and we basically need to get the entropy from the left hand side and the right hand side and then take some kind of weighted average. So let's first get the uh, left hand side. So we'll do left df is equal to df such that df feature is less than val. And actually let's just get the type. So left types dot types. So what I'm doing here is basically saying that uh, we're going to get the left hand side of the split and we're going to get all the types of fish over there, and there are again zeros and ones. So we're getting all the zeros and ones that live in the left hand side of this potential split. We can also get right types in the exact same way. So this would just be greater than or equal to. And now we need to get the entropy of these two lists. I think let's write one more helper function just to keep everything organized. So we're gonna say left entropy is gonna be equal to get entropy, a function we'll write in just a moment and we'll put in left types here. And right entropy, we'll be putting in here. So again, I'm getting the entropy from the left and right hand collections of um, types that live in those splits, okay? So now we basically need to take a weighted average of these guys, and the weights are how many samples live in the left versus how many samples live in the right. The proportion of those are gonna be our weights. So left prop is going to be the length of left types. In other words, how many samples got put on the left using this split and divide that by the length of the data frame. So that's the proportion of samples that live on the left and right prop. We could calculate it the same way, but we can also do a little shortcut that says right prop is going to be, you know what, let's just use, what I was gonna do is one minus left prop because that would be correct. But just to keep everything symmetric, let's just do it this way. So the length of the right types divided by len df. And then we'll simply return left prop times left entropy plus right prop times right entropy. Okay, good. So this, we've got a function here. And the last thing we need to do is define this get entropy function. And so this is kind of our base function that's driving the whole algorithm. This is just going to take in a list of zeros and ones and give us what is the entropy of that list, okay? So it's going to take in some vals, which is a list of zeros and ones. And what it does, first we'll need to calculate the proportion of zeros, or uh, actually proportion of ones that are in the list. So we'll do p is equal to np.mean vals. The reason this works is because if the list is known to contain only zeros and ones, then asking for the mean of that list is the exact same question as asking for the proportion of ones in that list. And uh, go back to your formula on entropy if you've forgotten it, but to get the entropy, we would basically need to do return negative p times np.log 2p minus, minus 
1 minus p times np dot log to 1 minus p. And even if you're not familiar with this formula, I can show you that it does work. And in fact, we should check it to make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. And one mistake I already see is that if vals is all zeros or all ones, then p is going to be zero or one, and you can't take the log of zero. So we'll need to include a default case that says if p equals equals zero or p equals equals one, then return zero. Because a list that contains all the same number has exactly zero entropy. So it's perfect information, basically. So let's give that a try. And to test it out, I'll do get entropy on, let's say, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this should give me 0, of course. If I had 1, 1, that should increase the entropy by a little bit. In, indeed, the entropy increases. If I add one more 1, that should increase the entropy again. Good, that's working. And if I add one more 1, this is the worst case scenario because we have 0 information. It's, it's a perfect case of maximum entropy. So yes, that gives me 1. And I should see them go back down as I introduce more ones back to 0.91, back to 0.65, and this should give me zero. Okay, good. So that's working, um, which is a good thing to check. If that wasn't working, everything would fail, basically. So that's working. We got our second helper function here, and then this should run now. Oops. We have a data frame object has no attribute types. So I meant to write the word type somewhere, which is probably up here. Yeah, this should be with no s and right <laughs> okay I don't know how that got there that looks better okay so now it's running cool so we got our first answer so when we ran this we found that the best first place to split would be on the variable length and the value you should split at is three point it's really three but because of our uh, step size it was a little bit above but this is telling us that the best first place to split I scroll back up here is length is equal to three so I'll um, impose this line in post-production, but we see that matches up with our prior understanding. And now just to close this video out, and we see the entropy here is 0.68. And now just to close this video out, um, how would we do the next split? So I'm gonna do it in kind of a hacky way just because this is a tutorial and not writing any production level code. But what we need to do now is basically get the data frame that is on the right-hand side of that split. Notice everything on the left-hand side, we're good to go, it's correctly classified. Everything on the right-hand side is where we need to continue doing work. So let's just put in a little thing here that says cur df is equal to df.copy, so we're not modifying the original data frame. And then we'll say cur df is equal to cur df such that cur df dot length is greater than three. Okay, so we have that. And now I need to put cur df everywhere that I put, oops, everywhere that I put df. Are those the only places? Oh no, there's one more here. Okay, let's give that a whirl. And now it says that after you do that initial length equals three split, the next place you should split is weight is equal to four. Let's confirm that. So on this right hand part of the data, if we use weight, which is the y variable equals four, that's the next split. And um, let's just do one more for fun, because I think we're starting to get the idea. It's just going to mean my condition here gets a little bit uglier. Again, I, I want to emphasize that if you do choose to take this code, um, I would strongly encourage you to modify it so that this is not a manual process. You can automate everything I'm doing right here. So if curd is greater than three and the weight is, let's see, what do I want to do here? Is greater than four. Yeah. And that becomes my new data frame. Oops. And now let's see. Now it says the next place you should split after that is length equals seven. So if I go up here, that would be length is equal to right here, right here. That makes sense because after I do that, everything on the right hand side of that becomes red and everything on the left hand side we can continue working on. So I think I'll stop here. Um, I think you're starting to get the idea. If you want to code a decision tree from scratch or at least understand how it works under the hood, it's checking all your different variables. In this case, we only had two, but in general you have many more variables. And it's going to do it in a more efficient way than this for loop technique we wrote. But um, this for loop technique does identify how we're checking every variable, checking various different splits of those variables, finding the one such that after we do that split, the entropy has become minimized. Okay, so um, hopefully you learned just a little bit about how decision trees work under the hood. If you did, please uh, subscribe for more videos just like this. And I, I would love feedback on this particular code with me format because it's pretty new. And um, yeah, cool. See you next time.